Hey, and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, and I, I, the reason I'm frowning is I, I'm cheating a bit on this puzzle. I've, I've typed it in because Mark suggested that it might be suitable for a video. Um, it didn't suit the way that he solves. And so he thought that it might, might suit sort of my uber logical um, methods better. So I typed it into Duncan Sudoku Solve, which is obviously the the um, interface that I use for solving. And then before I hit um, play on the recording, um, I started to look at the puzzle because it's got this weird symmetry in the middle. It's like a, I see it as some sort of snowflake type structure. And and so I've, I've, I've been staring at this for five minutes and I'm noticing a few interesting things. I've not put any numbers in. The way I've been looking at it is purely in my head. So I, it's not a massive cheat, but it's not it's not going to be a completely cold soul because I have spotted a couple of interesting things. Um, and certainly this looks a very interesting puzzle. Um, so we'll try that in a minute. Now, a couple of things to mention before we start. Um, I wondered whether you guys might like to um, see an interview with either Mark or me where you get to ask some questions about you know how we solve puzzles what we like to do regarding puzzles or even outside of puzzles um, so if that might be interesting then let us know either by email which is crackingthecryptic at gmail.com or via comments on on this video and uh, if it does seem like it might be a popular idea then uh, we'll arrange it um, for those of you in a position to do so um, we'd be very grateful for anybody who could consider sponsoring us on Patreon. Again, the link is in the description to the video. Um, Two dollars a month you get a puzzle that we design. Um, it's an exclusive puzzle. And for three dollars a month um, you get a video on how to solve that puzzle too. So um, it really helps to support us in what we're doing. Now let's turn our attention to this puzzle and think about how we may solve it. Now the first thing I'm struck by obviously is this symmetry and I wonder therefore what the provenance of this puzzle is. Quite often we can tell when we get pictures of puzzles sent to us and we can credit the creator but this time it's just um, we've just been sent text and now it may be this is Nicolae because the reason I say that is that I'm sure this must be handcrafted. Um, a computer wouldn't come up with this sort of beautiful snow shape, snowflake shaped pattern. Um, so uh, if it's Nickley, thanks to them. If it's someone else, thanks to them. Obviously, we try and give credit where we know um, who the creator was. Now, the thing that struck me when I looked at this is that this, this pattern in the middle heavily constrains rows and columns. And it con constrains them in a weird way. And that I got thinking about these fives. Now, if we look down these constrained columns at where fives can go, it turns out that they're very restricted. So we can put fives into these positions. Let's have a look at this one as well. So again, the same rows keep cropping up here. And we get these four rows, or sorry, four columns where the fives are locked into a subset of four different rows. So it feels to me like there is potentially an extreme, well, there's, there could be a sawfish. This could even be a jellyfish. The only reason I pause about whether it's a jellyfish is that all of these four fives are in the same central three by three block. Um, but there's certainly something that might be going on here. And I think, therefore, I'm going to leave these fives in and we'll see what we can do later on once we've done some other pencil marking to resolve where fives go it feels like this has got to be some some, some sort of trick involving the fives um, now what can we see uh, sixes we've got six here six here six is locked into one of those two squares um, ones up here look those two have got to be one six is here six six and this six, so this square has to be actually a six. Uh, eight, 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 ah, that's good. So we get a one eight pair at the top. 
Now, does this impact in any way on what we're thinking about? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't see how. These two sixes lock a six up there. These two fours lock a four in one of those two squares. Ah, and fours are actually fours are better. Four, four. And this 4, this square must be a 4. Ah, 8, 8, this square must be an 8. Now there we go. Are we... So now, now I think I have got a pure jellyfish, have I? What do I mean by a jellyfish? Well, my contention is that... The pattern of fives we see here, where I've locked the fives into a, a subset of four different rows, means that these are the only fives that are possible in these four rows. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters, for example, if we look along the central row of the grid, I don't think it's possible that this square, for example, ever contains a five. And let's just show you why that is. So let's imagine there is a 5 here in the final solution. What would the impact of that be? Well, you can see immediately this square here would have to be a 5 because there are only two possible 5 positions in column 3. So this would be a 5. I'll add some highlighting afterwards so it's clear. Um, looking at column 7, this can't be a 5, so this would have to be a 5. And now we've got nowhere that we can place a 5 in column 6. So this is just not possible. There cannot be a 5 here. That's absolutely sure. Now what about this square? Could there be a 5 here? And you, you can see immediately we're going to run into the same problem. Um, in fact, we're going to if we put a 5 here, we're actually going to end up with the problem in two different uh, columns because a 5 here rules out this 5 and this 5 it forces 5s into this square and this square and now we've got nowhere to place a 5 either in column 4 or column 6 so there is definitely a restriction that's in play here regarding the positions of fives. Now I'm actually going to use this, I'm going to try and use this immediately on this central row because the fact that there can't be any fives in it must be relevant. One, three, five, seven and eight. So this, uh, this square is not restricted at all. One, three, this is restricted. This square here now, it, before before we spotted whatever this pattern is called, whether it's a jellyfish or some sort of weird swordfish, um, this could have been a 5, but we've, we've shown definitively this cannot be a 5, and the only other number it can be actually is 7. So we get a 7 here, and we're left with 1, 5, and 8. 1, 3, 5, and 8. This is a 3 or a 5. This is 1, 5, or 8. Hmm. Okay, let's pencil mark the five, the ones in there. That gives us that gives us another digit. Look, we have a one here, a one in one of these two squares. So this square down here is a one. Two, five, seven, nine. This is a seven or a nine. I feel actually that this puzzle is not meant to be cracked by standard sort of notation. I think this is some sort of geometric test. Um, let's take a look at the central column. 2459. Two, four, five, nine. Hang on. Look, 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 look. There's this two here and this two here. There's something going on with twos. Um, let, where can we place a two in this column? 
we can place it here and we can place it here. So there's two positions. This column has the same restriction because this 2 here removes the 2 from this square. So in, in column 7 we're also limited to exactly the same rows on the 2's. So this is a classic X-Wing. Um, so what do I mean by an X-Wing? Well, again I'll add some highlighting but the fact that we've limited the 2's to one of two positions in these two columns means that in the final solution we'll either have a 2 here and a 2 here or there will be a 2 here and a 2 here. So what we can now do is rule out 2's along these two rows. There cannot be any other 2's. Now if we look at look up upwards first, let's look at this row. Now these positions obviously a 2 was ruled out anyway. This position a 2 was ruled out anyway. So the interesting square in terms of row 2 is this one. And I don't think there's going to be enough of a restriction. So 1, 2 ruled out by the X-Wing, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's not bad though, 7 or 9. So this becomes a 4, 7 or 9. But I think down here we're going to get look at this square because this square is already restricted because of the column. Um, so this square can now not be a 2, can't be a 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This square is a 9. Yeah, this is definitely hand designed. This is a beautiful puzzle. Beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Um, okay, so now we've got 2, 4, 5. Ah, 2 and 5 in row 1. So this becomes a 4. This is a 2 or a 5. Now I'm going to highlight this. I know that this isn't standard notation for me, but I need to be able to keep track of this. So I'm going to remove the swordfish notation now as well, because we use the swordfish to get this 7 and that. That's, it's going to confuse me if I leave it in there. So, okay. Okay. Oh, this 4 here, what does that do? Nine here. Sorry. What I'm doing, by the way, is I know I'm not writing in any pencil marks. I, I'm not looking for st standard pencil marks here. What I'm trying to do is to use this weird pattern in the middle to restrict rows and columns in the way that we have been doing. Now, one thing I've noticed is nines. If we look at the nines, there are three nines in the grid, apart from this one, which we've just found. But these three nines prevent there, obviously, from being nines... Um, in any of these positions on the extremities of the grid. Now, if we look down column 1 now, where can we place a 9? We can place one here. We can't place one here because of this 1-8 pair, which I'm now sure was, was deliberate. So we get to place 9s in only two positions again in column 1. Let's look at this side. Where can we place 9s? Well, this 9 has just ruled out a 9 from this square. So we can have one here, this one, and this one are ruled out by here. This, this is absolutely fascinating. So we lock 9s in. Threes. Where can the threes go in these same col columns? We can place a three here. We can't have a three here. We can have one here, but we can't have one here. 
And on this side, do the same thing. 3 can go here, not here, can go here, and it can't go here, and it can't go here. So, haha, <laughs> this, this is one, this is just a superb Sudoku puzzle. This is one of the most beautiful puzzles. We, we've done some incredible puzzles. The Knight's Move one I did yesterday was gorgeous, and this, this is absolutely sensational. Because now we have a rare, rare pattern. We have what's called an overlapping X-Wing pattern. Now, if you go and type this puzzle into a computer solver, it won't. It doesn't recognize this as a restriction. Um, or I've never seen one that recognizes this restriction. But it is so powerful because now, actually, what this amounts to is because both this square and this square are part of different X-Wing patterns, um, this and this are a 3-9 pair. Now, you may say, well, how can you know that? Well, look, let's just think about why. So let's imagine in the finished solution, this was a 3. This was a 3. We know from the X-Wing pattern we've just found that this square here is also a 3. Now, if that's the case, if we have a 3 here and a 3 here, like that, what does that mean in terms of the nines? Does it mean anything in terms of the nines? Well, if there is a three here, we know, because this is one of the positions that the nines could have taken in its x-wing, that this square down here must be a nine. Now, if that's the case, obviously we know that the opposite side of its x-wing must be true. This must be a nine. So if this is a three, this is a 9. And you can, I mean, it's very obvious to see if I just start with this being a 3 instead, we'd end up with the, the 9 on the other side. So these two squares, believe it or not, have to be a 3 9 pair. Now, does that matter? Well, it must matter, surely. So we've got if I look along this row now, I've got to place the numbers 2, 4, and 5. So this is a 4 or a 5. This is a 2 or a 4. Um, uh, surely I'm, I'm missing something here. I'm sure I'm missing something here because this must be relevant. Um, what is it I'm not seeing? Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so, I had to think about it the other way around. So although I locked 2, 4 and 5 into these positions, the, actually the critical question I should have been asking myself more quickly is what does it matter that we can't have the number 2, 4 and 5 in this square and this square? Now, if we look at this column, the fact that we can't have a 2 or a 4 in this square is suddenly interesting, especially as there's a 4 here, look. Where can we place a 4 in column 9? Can't be here anymore, can't be here or here, can't be there, it has to be there. There we go. And now we have a 4's here, and 3's here, so there's a 3 4 pair here. 1, 2, one five, seven. Five, six, seven, nine. So let's have a look along here now. What is there a what are the remaining options? Five, six, seven, and nine with a nine here. So actually, there's now only one place for a nine, and that's going to be there. And the moment we get this nine, we manage to bite into the X wing because now this can't be a nine. So we can remove it. But let's remember that once this is not an option as a nine in our X wing, neither is this. And we know that this is a three nine pair. So this square becomes a 3, this square becomes a 9, and this square becomes a 9. All as a result of this, this number here. 
and that must be useful he says uh, I mean I may not spot immediately why, why it's useful but it just must be um, so nines now are locked we can finish them off in this position that, that must be a nine this must be a nine up here oh dear I might be about to be getting interrupted please don't get interrupted sorry brief pause there um, and so just coming back to this now um, well threes here so we can unwind the other x-wing so let's put the three in now here this column must be two seven two seven three three there must be a three in one of these two positions this three is this three was marking the other side of the x-wing so that's obviously not not right um, Threes, threes, threes. Ones, ones. This square must be a one. This must be a four, five here. Uh, what next, one may ask? One, two, five, two, five, one, five, one, five. Um, let's have a look at this row. So two five seven to place this square looks restricted to me. Well, maybe we have to go back to the swordfish now to crack this. Fives. What can this square be? It can be a one, it can't be one, two, it can't be it can't be a three, four, it can be a five, six, seven, no, nah, so Ah, can it be? No, can't be an eight. So there is a five there. Now, what, if anything, does that do for us? Well, it gives us a five here, which unwinds the five and the two. Uh, just being a bit careful, that means this is a two. Now, remembering that this was all part of another X swing, if I remember rightly, wasn't it, with this square here. So that is a 2 down at the bottom there. The 6, 7, 8 now must go along here, and there's a 6 into that square, so that's a 6. In fact, we can go further, that must be a 7, this must be an 8. We still need a 7 in column, sorry, in row 7, so that's 7 and 2 on wines like that. Now this square must be a 6. assuming that was pencil marking normally at the top, that must be a 6, 2, 4, 5, this must be a 4, this is a 2, this is a 5, we need 3 and 7 to complete, those must be like that, I don't know why I had a 7 in that square, uh, but never mind, so we need 3 and 4 into these two squares and there's a 4 here, so this is a 4, this is a 3, this 8 and 1 is resolved by the 8 down here. This 4 resolves the 4 and the 3. This must be a 3. And I think we're very much on the home straight now. Um, this is some sort of work of art, though. Um, we are very lucky on this channel. We get to solve some incredible puzzles. Um, and this is one of the very best, in my opinion, that we've seen. It even Actually, even in the last couple of days we have seen some sen some sensational Sudoku. Um, Alright, now hopefully if I've done that all correctly, oh no, <laughs> I haven't finished yet, so we're going to do these two. Um, so we're looking for what's that going to be, 5 and 7, so 5 here, 7 here, and there we go, absolutely magnificent stuff. Thank you very much for the person who sent this in, um, this, this was such such a great Sudoku. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We appreciate it. We'll be back soon, hopefully with another puzzle as good as this one.